Well, the K1 is an ABS printing monster, and obviously the K1 appeals to a lot of people for a lot of reasons, speed and quality. But I think one of the main attractions to the K1 right now is the fact that it's an enclosed machine that can print more exotic filaments like ABS and ASA, nylon, polycarbonates, and other things outside of the traditional PLA. And it can do all of that at a low entry price. A quick thank you to Creality for sending us over this machine and letting us share it with uh, you. Since Halloween is just around the corner and it's time to start printing all of our spooky little models, I'm going to print my all-time favorite model, which happens to be a Darth Vader pumpkin mashup. But rather than doing it in a traditional PLA like every other printer can, we're going to highlight some of the features and functions on the Creality K1, and I'm going to print this Darth Vader pumpkin mashup, well, this one, in ABS and ASA. So let's start off with a little bit of a question here. Why is the K1 appealing? If you're watching this video and the K1 interests you, let me know in the comments below. Tell me why the K1 interests you. What's appealing about it? First, I think these machines are appealing because they're Core XY. And that's the, the latest and greatest printer that's on the market right now. They're super fast. Uh, they're very accurate. And they're turnkey. They come pre-assembled, ready to go. Also, I think there's some brand excitement. Creality happens to be the largest brand in 3D printing, and I think the people that are loyalists to Creality, and there's nothing wrong with that, they want Creality to succeed, and they're super excited to see Creality come out with something new and something fresh and something fast and accurate. This particular model, the K1, has a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build volume. It's fully enclosed. Price ranges anywhere from 400. Yes, 400. Make wow. sure you're subscribed to this channel because last weekend we dropped a code in a video to pick up this machine on Amazon for $408. I know it's insane. But this machine ranges in price from $400 when it's on sale to about $599 full retail. Now, before we take a look at the actual print, let's talk a little bit about ABS and the K1. Now, ABS is a very common polymer, and ABS stands for acrylonitrile abutadiene styrene, and it is very commonly found uh, around your house, uh, inside and outside. Matter of fact, if you were to look out your window at the homes around you, you see the black pipes that are sticking up out of those roofs, that's ABS. If you or your family is into Lego, that's all ABS. ABS provides a greater level of impact resistance, toughness, and rigidity compared to other filaments like PLA. Where PLA might shatter given enough stress, ABS is going to give a little bit before it fails. ABSs have a glass transition temperature around 105C, while PLAs have that same transition temperature at about 60C. This means that PLAs will deform in the hot summer sun, while ABSs will remain quite stable. And a huge thank you to Polymaker. They are the official sponsor of our channel, and they've supplied all the filament that we've used here today. I'll have a link on the screen in the description below. Go check them out. If ABS is superior to PLA, the price is about the same. Matter of fact, a spool of Polymaker Polylite PLA and Polylite ABS is exactly the same at about $21.99 a spool on their website. So why aren't more people printing with ABS over PLA? Well, that really comes down to simplicity of printing. PLA is very easy to print with. It's very forgiving. It doesn't require an enclosure. It's not as sensitive to shrinking or drafts and cooling like ABS is. And it's non-toxic. I mean, PLAs sell. There's all these fantastic colors in PLAs. ABSs are a little bit more difficult to find fun colors in because PLAs outsell ABSs probably 100 to 1. This question comes up a lot. Do you have to have an enclosure to print ABS? And the answer is really yes and no. ABS can be printed without an enclosure if you're in an environment that doesn't have drafts. If you're printing small parts where the build plate can keep that part consistently warm without certain areas of it cooling prematurely, and you have good bed adhesion. If you can keep your environment somewhere around 28C to 30C without drafts, you can print your ABS on a printer without an enclosure. People do it all the time. In fact, there's thousands of people doing that right now. I've printed ABS on a Prusa Mini with no enclosure, and it prints just fine for small parts. So why do you have to have an enclosure, or what, why should you have an enclosure? When ABS cools, it shrinks about 1.5%, and as it contracts, it begins to pull away from the build plate, uh, ultimately warping and losing bed adhesion. Now, there are things that you can do if you're going to print it without an enclosure, and you could use things like Vision Miner, and I'll have a link on the screen in the description below, but they have their nanopolymer adhesive, which is a fantastic glue that holds down things like nylons and polycarbonates and ABSs and ASAs really tightly to the bed. Magigoo also sent us over some of their awesome product to hold down prints to the build plate. I've not used it yet, but expect some content coming soon for that. An enclosure helps maintain consistent temperature. It helps remove drafts and it helps keep the environment warm so that as the build plate is heating the print from the bottom and the nozzle's got some heat on the top, 
it really helps keep the print at a solid, stable temperature so that even if it is cooling slightly, it's cooling slowly and it's cooling evenly. Now, PLA differs quite a bit from ABS as far as enclosures go. With all filaments outside of PLA, an enclosure is fine. When you're printing with PLA, you'll notice that some of these 3D printers, these enclosed ones, well, I'd say all of them, have a removable lid or a, a removable top. The Pro 2 behind me has a removable lid. The E2, this is actually like a, I would say a hood that opens up to allow the heat to escape. And the reason for that is because PLA has a low glass transition temperature, if it's too warm in the enclosure, it allows heat to come from the heat block up through the heat break and into the cold zone, effectively causing the filament to melt or swell. And then that's what causes jams. And so you're going to want that lid open and you're going to want as much airflow through that machine as possible to prevent that from happening. Now, here's the safety warning. When you are printing ABS and you are printing ASA, you are going to want to have proper ventilation. The printer should be located where there's fresh air. Don't print ASA and ABSs in an area where people are sleeping. Also, pets, they breathe. It's an issue for them too. So remember that the S in ABS and ASA stands for styrene, right, which is toxic. Now, the original models used in this mashup are the Mini Vader by iTech 3DP and the Jack Lantern by Makey's. I'll have a link to printables in the description below. I used the Creality Print app to slice this up using their generic ABS material settings and the normal profile. I scaled it up to 150%, printed it at a 0.2 millimeter layer height at around 300 millimeters per second with 10% infill. I did set the temps a little bit higher at around 270 or 275 C, and that was so that the effective printing temperature would fall within the range for Polymakers, Polylite, ABS, and ASA at around 260. The pumpkin was about six hours, and the body was about three hours. I do know that when I printed these before on a Prusa Mark 3S and a Prusa Mini, that it was around 14 to 16 hours. So printing it at 300 millimeters per second on the Creality K1, and eh, quite a bit faster, and the quality is fantastic. And for those asking what the difference is between ABS and ASA, ASA is just a little bit more sophisticated version of ABS, and it's UV resistant and a little bit more expensive. Overall, I think the prints turned out great. I really don't see any artifacts. I don't see any defects. I don't see any ringing. Overhangs look fantastic. If you're looking inside these eyes right here, this can be a problem that I've experienced on other printers, but the K1 handled the overhangs beautifully. I mean, they're absolutely perfect. If you like this content and you want to see more, consider hitting the like button, giving us a subscribe. It goes a long way to helping out our channel. The K1 appeals to a massive segment of the market, and I've been telling that to people for a really long time. Companies like Bamboo are up and coming with fantastic machines, but Creality is poised in a fantastic position where they have a Core XY machine on the market right now that they've been selling for $400 to $600. That's incredible. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I think it looks great. It comes pre-assembled. It prints well. It's fast. And it prints more than just PLA. And it's really giving people an opportunity to step outside of PLAs and PETGs and do things more sophisticated, more industrial. And I think one great use for these machines is going to be in print farms. I really do. At a price that ranges from $400 to $600, I can only imagine the print farms that are being built right now with Crowley K1s cranking out parts. Now, support is a concern, and that's been an issue with Creality since the beginning. However, I was told by Creality official that they are working on increasing their support as well as their quality control. And we've actually seen that in the real world now with viewers of our show and our channel coming and saying that they had an issue with Creality printers, not just the K1, but other machines. And Creality is much more responsive and even getting parts shipped out to fix them immediately. So I'm rooting for them. Let's, let's go, Creality. Let's in increase that support. Let's do better. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to give a huge shout out to our YouTube members. You are what make this possible. Thank you to Jesse West, Christopher Slayton, David Kwasnick, Waste in Time, VPS Data, Captain Jerbear 91 Sir Will 3D, Joel Finn, Brandon 0109, Cam Nicholas, Luppy Luptonium, The Cinzia, Patrick W3D, Rip Artist, Vredog Knight, Cetral, Your Buddy Denek, Buddha 3D, and Jedi Spidey. Thank you so much for your support. And if you'd like your name in every one of the videos that we do, consider hitting the join button below to become a channel member. And thank you for letting me do this.